Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again highlighting something from PR Props. He's an amazing sculptor, he sells resin casts on Etsy. If you got a couple bucks, definitely go on, check out his shop and see if there's something that you could possibly buy to help him out. Um, I bought a Pokemon mask from him recently, an Entei, and I, I'm not extremely familiar with Pokemon. Uh, my little brother was obsessed with them as a child and probably still to this day. Shout out Tyler. Um, I, I never really got into it, but I, I really liked the design of this mask. So I bought it and had an issue. Um, I have a ginormous head and in no way would this mask fit my ginormous head. And I was trying to think of a creative way to turn it into something else when I thought, why not make a shield? I like shields, I kind of collect them. Those are probably the one thing that I don't actually sell that I make here on the channel. Uh, and I, I thought it would make a good, almost like a crest that goes on the front of a shield, the ones that you, you know, the old timey ones that you see that protrude out. Uh, so it saves me the time of having to sculpt that thing out. All I got to do is build the base for it to go on and then paint it up. So today we are going to build a Pokemon Entei shield. Sounds a bit absurd. Why not? Let's get to building. I bought this saucer sled a while back to make a Captain America shield and it just has been kind of sitting in my hoarder shed for a while. I thought instead of using it as the base for this build, I could pour resin over the top of it, so taking advantage of the convex side of the saucer. So I cut off the handles and put down a layer of tape just in case I actually want to use it for a shield later. I got out some Smooth Cast 300, some pouring cups, mixing stick, and gloved up. Smooth Cast 300 is a two part resin with equal parts A and B. I mixed up batches of 10 ounces total and poured it onto the shield. Then I used a sponge brush to control the spread. I repeated this step about five times to build up the thickness. On the fifth layer, I poured out my mixture and stuck PR Props Awesome Intay mask on top of it to secure it into place. Because the mask was not intended for this purpose, I had to make some adjustments on the shield. I got out some freeform air sculpting epoxy by SmoothOn and mixed up a small batch. Then I spackled it into the gaps between the mask and the shield, extending the build out and bridging the two parts to make it look like one whole piece. This stuff takes about four hours to set up.
As I waited for the freeform air to dry, I decided to pop the casting off of the saucer and take a look at it, hopefully that it worked. I pulled up a small area and wedged a pair of scissors in there, then slowly worked my way around until it popped off. It was at this point that I realized my shield needed to have a better shape, so I picked a traditional looking design, plotted a couple of points by eye, and then using a flexible ruler, transferred the shape close to symmetrical with a sharpie. Then using a cutting wheel on my Dremel, I cut it out. Wear a respirator and a face shield, dust goes everywhere and those cutting wheels can explode. Had it not been for my face shield a while back, I would have lost an eye because one of them broke. Now that the free form is dry, I go in and sand the transitions along with any other rough edges. My uneven pores also get a little patchwork of free form put in them to make the thickness a little more consistent and less splattery. To add some more detail and not have to pour more resin, I decided to use some sturdy Wet the Foam from Cosplay Apprentice to build up some layers around the resin cast. I trace about an inch and a half around the outside of my casting onto the EVA foam, then I cut it out. I also cut another layer just a little bit bigger to make kind of a frame around it all. Covered the foam and the casting in contact cement and added a little super glue to be safe. Then I tacked it all together. I'm using the sled to support the curve as I attach all the parts. I cast a half circle from an ice tray mold to use as my pokeball. Flatten an area so that I could glue the button on and then I cut a line across it to make it look like it was divided in two pieces. I super glue my pokeball along with some other circles around my resin perimeter. Then for an added detail, I glued down some resin cast rope I made from a cake decorating mold. I sand parts to make them fit just right. To get the curved parts of the rope at the top, I pulled it out of the mold before it was fully set and then bent the arch in them.
Then to finish off the build, I added some halved 18 millimeter EVA dowels along the foam edge and added some resin cast bolt heads for fun. I started stockpiling a bunch of bolt screws and greebly parts for quick little details like this. Since I am finishing the front and the back of this build, I am going to go ahead and glue in the strapping for the shield handles. This is an old leather belt cut into pieces and small pieces of two millimeter what the foam as a support. The foam will reinforce the strap connections. I super glue the foam to the leather, then contact cement the straps onto the back of the shield. I tape up the leather on the back and lay down three layers of black spray paint. Then I add a base layer of silver, brown, and black for an aged metal look. I layer down some copper, gold, and a little light silver acrylic paint from Plat Effects to make my parts stand out. I thought that this color scheme helped me stay true to the Intei character just in metallics. I put down two layers of each color. Then once it was all dry, I went in with some black and brown plaid effects to dirty it up a little bit. You push it into all the cracks to pick up on all the details, then wipe away the high points with a paper towel. I think this would be a cool idea for broken masks, ones that are too small like what I did, or even maybe making a scene using old action figures. The possibilities are endless. If you decide to make your own version of this, please share it with me on social media. I'd love to see your take on it. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I'm extremely happy with the way it turned out. It's a shield, so of course I'm gonna like it. Um, I kind of experimented a little bit here. I've never poured resin over something before like that, so it was definitely a bit nerve wracking. I realized that the texture kind of isn't smooth or anything, but I wasn't really going for that. Um, I was kind of going for an old kind of piece together look. The resin cast things here, here's, here's a tip. If you're looking to get into resin casting, find little small things like this. You can search for um, soap molds or fondant 
molds. Don't just be looking for like molds for casting because it may not pull up everything. There are lots of areas you can go into ice trays um, to find cool little doodads and things that you can put on there or you can make your own. I made um, little bulk uh, molds to cast extra resin in that definitely come in handy from time to time when you're trying to put extra little details and not have to hand carve each of those out of foam and sand them down. But yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these shields yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to turn Pokemon's faces into shields to protect you from absolutely nothing other than sitting on your wall. You gotta catch them all. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. Figured, um, I might as well armor up here, so. Time to go catch some Pokemon. Peace out!